Hi, I'm Jerry Neville from the Communications and Stakeholder Relations Department with the Regional Municipality of Wood Buffalo. And joining me today from WSP is Elliot White. Elliot, we've teamed up with you guys to do some spot repairs through town. What's a spot repair? So a spot repair is simple. It's basically, um, you have, sometimes you have storm and sanitary sewer lines that, uh, that are damaged in, a, in, a, in a, sh a small location. And we just need to go in and dig those up and repair them in those, in those locations. Okay, now some of the areas for this, we've just gone in to do some work. Is this additional work on top of what we've just done in some of these areas? So there's, there's three locations that we're going into that in the vicinity of the area there was work done in the past, um, but um, we're actually going in and doing um, new work and fixing old damages that were pre-existing from years ago. Okay, now one of the words that we're going to use in here, uh, an acronym, is CIPP. This is new to Fort McMurray, not new to the world. What is CIPP? CIPP stands for Cure in Place Pipe. Uh, it's essentially what it is, is um, it's a, essentially a plastic sock, an open-ended sock that they pull, in, pull through the pipe and uh, then they adhere that, uh, adhere that to the pipe and it, and it repairs minor, uh, minor repairs in the pipe. It, it replaces the program of actually going in and, and ripping out the pipe and, uh, and, and replacing it in, in full. Well, I know residents are going to be happy that you're not going to be taking the roadway out because that usually takes about four weeks to do. How long does this CIPP take? A day. Yeah, if, if, not, if not quicker. So the intent there with the CIPP program is to start in the areas after everyone kind of gone to work and be out of there before they get home. So that's the plan. So what is the impact on the residents? Is there anything that you're asking the residents to do while you're doing the CIPP program? Yeah, with the CIPP program, uh, because we are installing a liner in the sanitary line, um, the homes are connected to that sanitary line. And um, there's gonna be a brief period of time through the day that um, any flow from their homes um, can't pass through the pipe. So what we ask residents to do is to limit their, their heavy water use. Um, so for example, limit their, their washing machine and their dish, dishwasher use. And what that allows us to do is to do our work. And then and when we go in and we'll, we'll reopen the line, um, then they can freely use that again. So it's only for a brief period of time that we ask them for, to limit their heavy use of water. So like I mentioned, we are going in there after, you know, people kind of go to work and after 8.30 or what have you. And by the time they get home, it's, uh, we're, we're, we're out of there already. So. Okay, so this is when you say spot repair, this is not just in one spot. This is spots all over the municipality. How many different spots are you doing this in, Elliot? So we have, we have 10 locations this summer, um, all through the lower town site area and up in Beacon Hill. Okay, so let's go through those right now, Elliot, and that way we, you can tell people what's going to happen. Let's start Fraser and Hill. What's happening there? So at the south intersection of Fraser and Hill, um, we have a couple spot repairs in that intersection. Uh, we got to uh, replace some pipe, and then we are going to do one CIPP uh, program. So. Okay, so you're going to actually be lining pipes down there by Hill Drive on Fraser? It'll be actually on Fraser. So um, the CIPP itself will take approximately a day. So it's not a, it's not a long, it's not a long process, but the spot repairs at Fraser will probably take about two weeks. So we'll go in and repair the pipe at that location and then do the spot repair. Okay, are you going to be limiting access at any given time on Hill Drive or Fraser? No, the, the, the access will be will remain somewhat open. Um, we're going to have to close that one particular intersection, um, but there, there'll be traffic routed around uh, to allow access to everyone, everyone's residence. So. Okay, let's move up to Alberta Drive. You guys are going to be back in the pocket park there. Yeah, so I, I understand that uh, some pipes were replaced um, you know, a couple of years prior to the fire, and um, there's a, the, a, an older pipe uh, that leads to the park um, that has some damage, so we're going to go into a spot, one spot repair just right close to the road, and then we're going to do a, another one day line uh, of, a, of a pipe section um, in that, in that, along that pathway. So the pathway um, will be closed during construction. However, we have provisions to put a temporary pathway um, just, uh, just to the, to the, to along the fence line there so people can still access the, to the park. 
Awesome. Now let's move to Ells Crescent. We recently did a drainage project back there as well. What's going on on Ells? So Ells, Ells Crescent, uh, that's a, uh, we have three, uh, three spot repairs, oh sorry, two spot repairs in that location. And again, we have uh, two CIPP programs there. So again, in Ells, we're going to be in there for about two weeks and then uh, the CIPP program will take a day again. Okay, and not too far from there, you guys are going to be on Biggs Avenue as well. Yeah, Biggs is uh, just around the corner in Els, so it's the residential section of Biggs. Um, there's uh, three spot repairs, luckily right in the same similar location. Um, so only one small section of Biggs will be closed. Uh, and we'll do our repair and then uh, final, uh, finally uh, finish off with the CIPP uh, lining. Will residents still have access on Biggs? There's going to be a couple homes that will, will lose access to their, to their driveways. Um, they'll be able to park uh, in, in just adjacent to their homes and access their house that way. Um, but um, a couple driveways will lose access for, you know, like I said, about two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to move up to Beacon Hill because you've got uh, three projects within Beacon Hill, but they're all in green spaces, so they shouldn't be uh, affecting traffic at all. Correct. Let's talk about yeah. Beacon Hill Drive first. So Beacon Hill Drive, so it's, we're not actually on Beacon Hill Drive, like you mentioned. We're, we're sort of in the Beersley, Beacon Hill area in the PUL. Um, simply, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, going to be a simple uh, uh, CIPP liner. It's, there's no repair to any pipe, just a CIPP program. Okay, and as well, Beacon Hill Place in the green space. Yeah, so again, uh, Beacon Hill Place is going to be behind the residence. It's, uh, it's kind of on the uh, east side, so in between the homes and the, and the highway. Um, again, we have one spot repair there and a quick, um, a quick CIPP uh, lining of that pipe as well. So again, um, you're looking at a week. For, for these repairs. Okay, and the last one in Beacon Hill is Beaver Ridge Close, and again, in a green space. Yep, yep, so out of the road, uh, one spot repair there. This, um, this location is, you know, again, in the green space in, in, the, in the middle of uh, Beaver Ridge, and uh, we do have a, a short little CIPP uh, in that area. Okay, two uh, items left on the agenda here. We've got waterways down by McCormick. You guys aren't be doing a repair necessarily down there, but doing something else. Yeah, we're doing something else. Uh, what was identified by the fire department that uh, they wanted to have an extra hydrant put in. So um, we're, the, the RMWB is going to be putting one in. So it's simply uh, on McCormick, uh, we are going to just um, open up the road, connect to the water line, and, uh, and bring a hydrant over, um, over onto the shoulder of the road. So again, not closing McCormick down, you still have it half open? We'll have it half open, yes. Okay, and the last one, I know everybody that goes to McDonald Island Park is going to love this one. When you're coming into McDonald Island Park, that big floodplain on the side, you guys are fixing that this year, Elliot. How are you doing that? Yeah, so as everyone has probably seen, it floods in the spring and heavy rain. Um, essentially, there's a catch base in there that needs to be connected into the system to build um, capacity and um, yeah so we're going to try and stay off the road we're going to cut through the berm and then connect into the system and we shouldn't be affecting baseball at mcdonald island park either no no we have provisions for that we're going to make sure we stay away from the ball field so Oh, perfect, Elliot. Thank you so much for joining me today. Very informative. Mm -hmm, no problem. Thank you. And if you have any more questions, please reach out to our Pulse Line 743-7000 or Pulse Online.